Hello, welcome back at Synthetic Biology 1. Right now, we want to show you how to do a standard type of DNA that you can use in various situations. So here I have my three tubes with purified plasmids, plasmid 1, 2 and 3, and a, a positive control plasmid. This is a plasmid that I've previously used in a PCR reaction with the same primers and um, this worked really well. So if this one doesn't work, then I know something is wrong with my, with my PCR. Um, we have our forward primer, our reverse primer. The forward primer will anneal to a part in the DNA just before the gene. And the reverse primer will anneal to a part downstream of the gene. And of course, we need an enzyme to polymerize our DNA fragments. And in this case, I'm using a fusion polymerase. This is a super accurate polymerase that also has the ability to um, to change misincorporated DNA. So uh, it will do an extra check to be sure that uh, the DNA fragment is exactly the one that we also have on the plasmid. So um, to make this uh, fusion polymerase happy in the reaction, we're going to need a special buffer for it. Uh, and we're also going to provide the polymerase with the building blocks to extend the DNA fragments. So the A's, the T's, the G's and the C's. The D and NTP's are in this sample. Uh, finally, I have a tube with DMSO here. DMSO is an organic compound and sometimes it's useful to use in your PCR to relax the DNA a little bit. It can happen that the DNA has secondary structures that will prevent the primers to anneal to your, to your DNA. Uh, and, uh, and therefore your PCR might not work. Happened to me a lot of times. So um, I actually include DMSO in all of my PCRs. Okay, so let's mix all these components together. Since I'm going to use the same forward and reverse primer in each reaction, I can make um, a master mix that contains all the necessary volume for the reactions that I'm, uh, for the individual reactions that I will perform. Apart from a positive control, I will also include a negative control. And this negative control will contain no template DNA, um, but just the primers the, and all the reagents and the polymerase. So just to check if, uh, if any of the samples was contaminated with DNA that allowed some fragment to appear. Okay, so I have five samples in total. So four from the different plasmids and one negative control sample. I already calculated how much I needed for, uh, for every, uh, to make these five reactions. And so what I will do first is uh, add the water at 161.5 microliters of water. to our master mix sample. I will add 50 microliters of fusion buffer. Five microliters of our DNA building blocks, the nucleotides, and uh, also five microliters of DMSO. What I also need to add are the primers. 12 and a half microliter of each primer, so the forward primer.
and the reverse. And of course, the polymerase. 2.5 microliter should be sufficient for uh, all the reactions that I will do. So here it is. I've put it on a cool block that's better for the quality of the of the enzyme. If you want to use it also in other reactions. So here we have our mix that contains all the all the chemicals, all the enzymes that we that we need. Um, and I'm gonna transfer volumes of 50 microliter to these small PCR tubes. Mix a bit my pipette to make sure the solution is homogeneous. Form and five. Okay, so the final thing we still have to add is our template DNA. So I'll take one microliter of each plasmid sample and add it individually to every tube that I have prepared. Number one. Third one and the positive control. And as I told you before, in the in the last sample, I'm not gonna add any of the template DNA. I'm just just to make sure that nothing weird happened in during the PCR reaction. So I should not see any fragments being amplified in uh, this uh, control sample. Okay, so now we have prepared our samples. We can uh, move them into the PCR machine. Our beautiful samples are ready for their special PCR treatment. I'll place them in the machine. And there are two uh, things to mention here that are important if you set the, the temperature settings. So one is the extension time that you'll need for your polymerase. In our case, we have a pretty fast enzyme. It's, uh, it goes um, for about 15 to 30 seconds per 1 kb. Our fragments are around 2 kb, so therefore, I've put one minute here in this, uh, in this step. And another thing to keep in mind is the annealing temperature of your primer. 55 degrees Celsius is good in our case, uh, but if you have different primers, you might want to change this temperature as well. So let's go. Press and start. And the only thing we have to do is wait until the reaction is finished. So that was it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.